So welcome, everybody. I'm very pleased to um, bring to you Approachable Yoga. Um, this is for the Essentials um, Thursday group. And any other participants who might be logged in today, welcome everybody. We're also going to do this for the Thursday evening 5.30 to 6.30 Essentials uh, group time, and that's in the Weight Management Center lobby. So um, you're welcome to come and do this in person if you'd like, um, but just so you know, that's when this is going on. So um, Weight Management Center and yoga. Um, some people might think that, that the two don't go together, um, but I will tell you that the history of the Weight Management Center yoga program goes back about two years. When Dr. Ar, uh, Dr. Ard and I collaborated to bring um, yoga to the Weight Management Center patients. So um, forgive me, I'll back up a little bit. My name is Susanna Cecil, and I am a licensed professional counselor. I am also a registered yoga teacher. So I have um, a, a license for the mental health discipline, and I also have an exercise science background. And I am, my, my passion, my real desire is to bring mental health and the discipline of yoga, the practice of yoga together for the benefit of every body, everybody, every body. It doesn't matter how tall um, you are, how small you are, um, what your body shape is, yoga poses are for every body. So back to Dr. Art and myself developing this program, um, we started a class. He facilitated myself starting a class on Tuesday evenings here in the Winston-Salem Weight Management Center lobby. So that class is ongoing. It's from 6 to 7 on Tuesday evenings. Um, all you need to do if you'd like to come is to purchase a class card from the nutrition shop. Five classes for $15. What a bargain. Um, the other opportunity for yoga in person is in Greensboro. So Gwen, our exercise um, program coordinator, teaches a half an hour yoga class in Greensboro on Thursdays from 5 to 5.30. That's right before the group that's in Greensboro. So if you live over there and you'd like to do some yoga, join Gwen on Thursday evenings at 5 o'clock. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm using this, this device to change our slides. So slide number two asks us, what is yoga? So um, what we think about, at least in the Western world, as yoga is more specifically called hatha yoga. It means the physical postures and the breathing that is associated with the practice of yoga. So um, using physical postures and breathing can bring about calm and it can, um, for the body, for the mind, and it can help us to soothe the, the fluctuations of the mind, what yogis call the monkey mind, um, can help us bring about peace physically and um, mentally, certainly, and hopefully that sort of spills over into the rest of our lives as well. So um, yoga is also about bringing energetic balance to the body. So we've got the nervous system that is either in um, protection mode, that's the fight or flight um, response. The um, when when we when we used to be, you know, chased by a saber toothed tiger, the fight or flight, we get out of the situation. Or there's the calming, the relaxation mode where we can calm down and we can rest and we can. Um, be just be ourselves. So yoga tries to balance those energies. If, if you think about it, if left to its own devices, the central nervous system, our nervous system, will almost always use the accelerator, the fight or flight, the accelerator rather than the brake, the relaxation response. So yoga tries to balance the two, the acceleration, Sometimes we need that. Sometimes we need the calm. All right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to change our slide again, and we're going to start um, practicing some poses. A couple of things 
you need to know. It's not ever how far you go into a pose. It's always how you go into a pose. So my training is Iyengar style yoga, which means um, pretty much alignment based yoga. Um, it's about holding the body well. It's about moving the body well. So we're all about um, being aware of the alignment of the joints so that we protect the joints, so that we protect the muscles, the spine. Um, so we're never trying to push or force. And if we ever experience pain, that's the body's signal telling us to back away, to do something different, to come out of the pose. So the, the phrase, no pain, no gain, does not, in my opinion, ever apply in yoga. Okay? So we're going to start in mountain pose. The Sanskrit for it, for your next um, crosswork puzzle, is Tadasana, T-A-D-A-S-A-N-A. -A -A. All right, so mountain pose. If you are in a place where you can participate, I invite you to stand. You don't have to have a mat. If balance is a little off for you today, please feel free to bring a chair alongside and just have the chair for your balance, okay? There's no problem with that at all. In, in my class, we use all kinds of modifications blocks, straps, blankets, chairs, all that. So um, so please feel free to do that. All right, so mountain pose. I want you to take a look at your feet. Are your feet lined up with each other? Are they parallel with each other? If they're not, go ahead and make that um, adjustment, okay? And then I want everybody to rock back on your heels. You're going to have to pull in the core a little bit because you might feel like you're going to fall over. All right, rock back on the heels and peel up the balls of the feet, peel up the toes, okay? So you're still working in the core, yes? We're moving into the pose. And then I want you to roll the sole of the foot down to the mat and then press the balls of the feet into the mat and then press the toes into the mat, okay? Double check that your feet are parallel to each other and even, that one's not in front of the other, but that they're even side by side, okay? And then I want you to breathe, okay? So rock back into the heels just a little. Relax the shoulders, maybe you need to shake them out a little bit, okay? If you could see yourself from a profile view, what we're looking for regarding alignment is the center of the ear, the center of the shoulder, center of the ribs, hip, knee, ankle, all the way down to be in alignment. Let me show you what I mean. From the side view, mountain pose is not this. Do you see how I'm leaning forward? Okay. It took a, um, a pretty sassy yoga teacher to teach me that my mountain pose was um, this used to feel normal to me. So huh, my mountain pose was a leaning tower, and she came up and she put her finger, and she knew me very well, put her finger in my chest and said, you're leaning forward, and she pushed me back. Now can you see that the ear, the shoulder, all the way down to the ankle is aligned? Okay? The first time, the first time that, she pushed me back like that, I felt like I was going to fall over, okay? But then it became much more natural to stand in that position, all right? So mountain pose, the soles of the feet are flat to the floor, they're parallel, and then we've got this alignment, okay? There we go. All right, so relax the shoulders. And relax the jaw. And then we're just going to breathe. Slow, deep inhalations. Eyes can be open or closed. Slow, deep exhalations. So maybe you can hear me, maybe you can't, but my inhalation, there's a little rasp at the back of the throat, 
And with the exhalation, there's a little rest. That's called ujjayi breath, okay? So we're just going to practice that. Inhalation, exhalation. All right, so yoga asks us to inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose, okay? So that's what we want to be doing. Um, there are some breathing patterns that use exhaling, inhaling through the mouth. We're not going to practice those. We're just working with Ujjayi. All right, so the next pose is extended mountain pose. So from mountain pose, the only thing we do is take the arms straight up. Palms are facing each other, and we reach up. Reach, 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 reach up tall as you can, like your fingertips are growing up to the sky, and then sink the shoulders out of the ears, and breathe. Keep breathing. Remember that alignment from the side view, the ear, the shoulder, the ribs, the center of the hip, all the way down to the ankle. And we want to keep that alignment. The tendency might be for some of us to lean forward, to arch the low back. We don't want to do that. So keep the weight in the heels and drop the tailbone down. Okay? The next pose we're going to do is a forward fold. So, lower the arms, bend the knees, and reach, reach, reach. You can go almost to a squat here, and I want you to reach toward the floor. Your knees can stay bent, okay? Come on. There we go. So, forward fold. We're exhaling because we're going toward the floor. Bend the knees, bend at the hips. And then reach, reach, reach. If your arms are not long enough to reach the floor, grab that chair, place your hands in the seat of the chair, and then begin to straighten the knees and keep the head going toward the seat. If you have a table, I'm coming out of the pose. You stay in the pose. If you have a table nearby and you want to place your hands on the table and hinge, 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 and then begin to straighten the knees. That's perfectly fine, too. I'm coming out of that. If you want to use yoga blocks, if you have some, um, or a stack of phone books, but I don't, who, need, who uses phone books anymore? Um, a stack of thick books. You can bring those books right in front of you, or a stool, and place your hands on that, and then begin to straighten the knees, okay? So I'm showing you the side view here, if you can still see, <laughs> and you're, you can turn your head out of your forward fold, what we're looking for is that same vertical line from the center of the hip to the knee to the ankle. If your knees are bent, no big deal, okay? And we just breathe here. And this allows us to bob the head, to shake the head, if you have a ponytail, maybe just swing your ponytail back and forth. For you fellas, maybe some of you don't have hair, then, you know, just pretend your neck is a slinky or something, okay? Bend both knees. We're coming out of the pose. Bring your hands to the tops of the thighs. Weight is in the heels. And then we're going to straighten the knees and come all the way up. Nice and easy. Okay, the next pose is very similar. It's half forward fold, okay? So I'm turning to the side. I believe you can probably see better that way. So if we were in extended mountain pose, okay, all we're going to do is bend the knees, bend at the hips, and then hinge all the way to the floor, and then for half forward fold, we pull the core in, walk the hands up to the thighs, and then hinge the 
upper body so that it's parallel with the floor. Hmm. Okay, Josh, I've lost my um, slides. <laughs> well, so we'll continue. All right, so we come with the upper body halfway, um, halfway up, parallel to the floor. Your hand can be on your chair. Your hand can be on your blocks. Your hand can be on your shin. Okay? Bend both knees and come on up and then turn to the front. Let's just take a big, slow, deep breath here. And one more. Okay, so our next pose is going to be Warrior Two. All right, so I have a hard copy here, um, and I trust that that you can see our Warrior Two. All right. So we're going to get these uploaded later, but for now, we're working on Warrior Two, starting from Mountain Pose. So I want you to step your left foot toward the short edge of your mat, okay? And then, or your floor space. And then step your right foot about three feet, three and a half feet. It could be two feet. It doesn't really matter. Remember, it doesn't matter how far you go. It matters how you go. All right, so here's the how piece. All right, your left foot is pointing toward the short ed edge of your mat, and the left heel lines up with the arch on the right foot. Okay? The right toes are turned slightly to the left, and then hands are on the hips. Okay? So the legs are turned toward the left short edge of the mat. The body is turned forward. Okay. If you have a little bit of a struggle with balance today, you can put your arms or your hands on a chair, on that chair back. Okay. From here, pull the core in nice and tight, and then bend that left knee. We want the knee to stack over the ankle, the left ankle, and then turn the body back toward the front. Next, we take the arms to the collarbones, and we just reach out. If you'd like, you can take your eye gaze over that left hand, or you can look just straight ahead if you'd like. So just notice here, this is our warrior two pose. Sanskrit is Virabhadrasana two, for your next words with friends, okay? Turn the palms up. Reach from the center of the chest like you're reaching out to the sidewalls, okay? Keep in mind, you want that knee, the left knee, pointing in the same direction as the toes. You want the knee and the ankle stacked, all right? You don't want the knee in front of the ankle, okay? So nice and stacked, nice and solid. Weight is distributed evenly between both feet, so we're not leaning in one way or another, and the middle of the body, the torso is coming right up out of the pelvis, all right? Just breathe. Eyes can be open or closed. Slow, deep inhalations. One more breath here. Use your chair for balance. Use your chair if it's getting up to be a little too much. If anything hurts, come out of the pose. Okay? All right, bring your hands to your hips. Heel toe your back foot forward, and then bring your feet back to mountain pose. Pause right here. We're not ever in a rush with yoga. We want to be aware of the sensations in the body. We want to be aware of what's going on from the soles of our feet, and just take an assessment all the way up the body. So let's take one slow deep here. And we're going to do that same pose on the other side. It's only fair. 
what we do for one side of the body, we always do for the other side. And that, that brings us back to that sense of balance that we talked about earlier, that yoga um, is, is working toward the practice of yoga is practicing balance. So anything we do for one side of the body, we'll do for the other. All right, so take your right foot and walk it down the, the mat or the floor space. Toes point straight out, and then your left foot goes back two feet to a half feet, whatever seems reasonable for you today. And remember that whatever is reasonable and, and, and easy or comfortable for you today may be very different from what it was yesterday, and it may be very different from what it will be tomorrow. So we're just going to be right here today. Let's work with what we've got today. All right. So the right foot points toward the long edge of a mat, if you were standing on one, and the left foot, the toes are turned slightly toward the middle of the mat. The heel, the right heel, lines up with the left arch, okay? And then we're going to bend the right knee. The knee tracks the toes, and it stacks on top of the ankle, okay? Plant the feet as if you're growing roots down into the earth. Lift through the crown of the head, and then bring your hands to collarbones, and reach out. And again, you can turn your eye gaze down past your right hand. I had a teacher once who said, warrior two is the proud warrior surveying the battlefield of life, or some such. And just breathe and be aware of the sensations in the body, the legs, the hips, the core, the neck, the face. Two more breaths here. And on your next exhalation, lower the hands. Heel toe the back foot forward. Heel toe the feet together. And we arrive back at mountain pose. We're going to take the arms up, overhead. If you can get your inner upper arm to come by your ear, great. If you have shoulder um, limitations that for whatever reason this would be painful, then just make a little halo and tap your fingertips. And then palms press. And we're going to exhale. All the way to the heart center for a full breath here. I want you to notice what's going on in the body. Notice the effect of the work that we've just done. And then release. Alrighty, so that was Warrior 2. That's this page right here. The next pose we're going to do is Chair Pose. Okay, so I'm going to turn sideways for this one um, just because it's easier to see. But you start in Extended Mountain Pose. Alright, so remember if Mountain Pose is this, Extended Mountain Pose was this, or maybe even this, okay? So from extended mountain pose, all we're doing is sinking, bending the knees, bending the hips, sinking the hips back and down, okay? Arms, I'm going to move this arm down, just so my face is not obscured. And then we're sinking. So chair pose is here. If you have that chair, piece of furniture chair nearby, you might want to hold on to that, okay? The arms do not have to be up. You might want to just hold on. Weight is in the heels in this one, okay? So we're not rocking forward on the balls of the feet. We don't want to do that. Weight is in the heels. This is a lot of core work. It's a lot of thigh work. Um, the air is nice and fresh in here, and I am sweating. So if you are, Thank you for joining me. All right, so chair pose right here or right here. Again, we want to sink the shoulders out of the ears. 
and just breathe. You also might feel some warmth in the shins, okay? There is um, a lot of work going on in chair pose. And then to come out, all you do is exhale. Breathe. Remember, we're not in a rush. We're paying attention to what's going on in the body. Notice the heartbeat. Mine is, has certainly gotten a lot faster than a few poses ago. Okay, notice the surface of the skin. I mean, are you breaking a sweat? I am. I notice it. I'm feeling that little bead going down the back of my body. All right? Just notice those things. Notice the effect of the work. Next inhalation, take the arms overhead. Again, you can tap the fingertips or you can take the arms straight up. Palms join. Exhale, hands. All the way to heart center. Notice here. Can you feel the heartbeat behind your thumbs? One more breath here. And release. Okay. So the last pose that we're going to do is a modification of um, what's known as Shavasana, okay? We're going to stand in mountain pose. I'm going to stand in mountain pose. You have the option to either lay flat on the floor, okay? Typically, Shavasana is done, or corpse pose, or final relaxation, as some people like to call it. Typically, it's done flat on your back, on the floor, okay? Um, but for the purposes of this, I'm standing, so feel free to sit in your chair that you've got nearby. Feel free to lay flat on the floor and just listen. Um, but any complete yoga practice will end with a Shavasana. It's called corpse pose. It is a yoga pose, and some people say it's their favorite um, your favorite pose of all. You may have seen t-shirts that say, I come to yoga for the Shavasana. Or, um, oh, there are all kinds of t-shirts out there. But any, anyway, um, some people, it's their favorite time. It's the only reason that they really, really want to come is to have that exertion and have that balance to the body and then enjoy uh, the course pose. However, for a lot of others of us, is a very difficult pose to achieve. Because whereas it looks like it's laying flat down, lying flat down on the floor, or sitting and relaxing back in a chair and closing your eyes, it's usually then, when we try to get quiet, that the mind starts jumping from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. So we're going to practice it. And I want you to notice those things, what's going on in the mind. So go ahead and close your eyes. Slow, deep inhalations, three times. And then I want you to let go of the breath. Let go of trying to manage the breath, trying to draw it out or shorten it. Begin to notice the back of your body and what it is sinking into. Notice the tug of gravity on the body. 
And as you begin to notice that, allow the muscle to fall away from the bone. Just let it go. Surrender the efforts of the body in this pose. Surrender the efforts of the mind in this pose. Bring your attention to the space behind your eyes. Notice if there's any stress or tension clenching around the eyes, through the cheekbones, through the jaw. And if there is, let go. Relax the jaw. Even let your teeth separate in your mouth. Let the corners of your eyes glide away from the bridge of your nose. And breathe. And I invite you, if you wish, to take a scan of your body from the soles of your feet, gently up through the legs, the hips, the torso, the arms, and if there's any tension still hanging on. Breathe it away. I'll be quiet for a few more breaths. And then we will close together. Over the next few breaths, ease your attention back to your space, wherever you are. And some movement to your hands, to your feet. And in your own time, make your way back to join me in Mountain Pose. Thank you for the privilege of join me today. I'm very appreciative that you plugged in um, and I hope to see you again sometime either over this mode of communicating or maybe even in a face-to-face -face class. My hope and my prayer is that you finish this practice with a sense of rejuvenation energy, but with calm. So we'll close today with a salutation that means the light in me sees and honors the light in you. And that word is namaste.